Hey everybody, so today we're going to be painting, um, this is my reference photo, so we're going to be doing this little pond scene with some geese in it. And um, so today's technique that we're going to be learning is how to handle reflections in water. So remember in watercolor we want to um, just get the general idea of um, our picture. We're, we're not going for like hyper realism. We just want to be very loose and expressive with our paint um, and we don't want to muddy our colors. So um, it helps that when you're starting a new painting, it helps to kind of um, lay out what colors you're gonna be using at the beginning. So I'm kind of planning to use these colors up here and then these colors more in the water here, okay? It also helps if you're gonna be mixing colors. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna use my masking fluid and I'm gonna mask off these geese, okay? Because I don't wanna deal with them just yet. And while that's drying, then I'm going to turn my attention up here to the uh, land, okay? So I like to do, if I'm doing anything with water reflections, I like to do my, um, my land portion first so that that way I know what's reflecting in my water. It, makes, it just makes more sense in my brain. Okay, here we go. So I have my masking fluid all on my little geese here. So now I'm going to draw my attention up here to this upper portion. Um, and that's going to be, let's look back at my reference photo here. So that's going to be this portion up here, okay, that we're going to be focusing on right now. Okay, so we're going to paint that fast and loose, and then we're going to focus our attention on the water. Here we go. <music> wet on wet technique up here and I got it to about where I want it with the colors and um, what I'm doing is I'm using a thirsty brush technique so we're gonna suck out all the moisture until your brush is just damp and then you're going to just lay it on this wet portion and you can pull out sections from your painting if you want something to be a little lighter so I kind of want some tree trunks here so I'm gonna kind of pull that color out um, if your paper is really, really wet, you might want to wait until it's in kind of the damp phase and not the shiny wet phase um, so that you have a little bit more success with that. The other thing I'm doing is I'm using a little bit of clean water on my smaller brush and I'm using it to push some of the color that I put down out of the way to make some kind of detail here. The other thing you can do is you can add a little bit of salt or some saran wrap into there. Um, I'm gonna be sprinkling just a little bit of table salt in there because I really like the way that it's looking. Um, I think I want it to be a little, just a little bit darker there. So I'm gonna add um, a little bit more of this brown mixture that I have here. And I took my brown and I mixed it with just a little bit of the um, Mars Black just to give it a little bit of darkness. I'm just gonna add that in there just a little bit. Just to give it some contrast. There we go, that looks better. You can also do a cutting technique where you use um, a little bit of a stylus or you can take the 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 dull edge of an exacto so not the the blade part but the dull edge and <clears throat> you can kind of cut in Ooh. 
it makes little furrows in your paper. It kind of makes a little valley on your paper. And that way the water runs down. And of course, because we're dealing with watercolor, the water pushes the pigment down into that furrow that you're creating and it'll create a dark line. Remember to vary the direction of your little grasses. Okay, you don't want to be very mechanical with it and be like, do, 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 right? Vary your spacing and vary the direction that the grass is going, okay? It'll give it a more natural look instead of more of a mechanical look. And you might find that you have to add a little bit more um, of your dark color, your contrast, because it's going to want to dilute out on you because we're doing the wet into wet technique. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna let that dry a little bit so that it sets and then we're gonna deal with our water. Okay. So I went in and while it was in the damp phase, which is like my favorite time to work stuff into um, my painting. So not when it's shiny wet, but after it's been sitting for about, depending on your paper, um, two to three minutes, up to five minutes, um, where the paper is still wet. Um, so if you touched your paper, you would leave a mark. Um, so the, the paint is still very mobile. Um, but it's dry enough that when you tilt your paper, it's not going to run everywhere. And what I did was I just kind of redefined my little bench here. Um, I feel like it was getting lost here in like the foliage. And then here at the bank, there's some rocks there at the bank, but I just wanted to kind of um, redefine this edge a little bit. So I just dry brushed a little bit of um, some brown in there, some um, like burnt umber color in there. Okay, so as you can see on my picture here, I've dedicated a whole lot of space um, to the water. So this is gonna be kind of the main event. Um, this is gonna be kind of the focus of my whole painting, okay? So I wanna make sure that I dedicate a lot of time there. And let's look at, back at our reference photo. So you can notice that this is really light in value here. If you kind of squint your eyes, you can notice that the water is very dark in value. Okay, compared to the land. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be doing dark colors down in here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're gonna do a two-tone um, wash. We're gonna add some yellow up here. Or we're gonna let it bleed down into some blue that's coming up from the bottom, okay? So we're gonna first wet our entire paper. So I'm gonna use my big old mop brush for that. Okay, and then we're going to be using um, our flat and we're gonna go back and forth and we're gonna do almost like a two double color wash. Now we have our masking fluid on our little geese so we don't really have to worry about going over top of them. It will be okay, that's why we put the masking fluid there so that we can leave that area white and we can go back in and we can redefine um, those geese, okay? Okay, so right now I am tilting my paper to encourage um, that blue to kind of travel a little bit. I want it to kind of run down into the yellow. The yellow is going to come down quite a bit. So I want to make sure that I have enough blue that runs in. Okay, I'm going to make sure that this is staying wet up here. We want it to run into the blue. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that our flat is clean. Suck all that blue out. And for this part, you might want to tilt your paper up a little bit to encourage the paint to travel. Remember that your color is going to be darkest when it's going on wet and then it's going to be lighter when it dries. 
So you want to be kind of bold with it right now. Go back into my yellow ochre. Just, I had to add a little bit more blue in there and we're just gonna allow that to kind of travel beautiful all right so while it's kind of still wet we're gonna add a little bit more definition here so in here where there's some trees and some foliage we're going to add a little bit of definition um, like this again we want to allow it to travel Okay, and I'm holding it completely vertical. Okay, so I just darkened a little bit here in the um, reflections. Those are looking so beautiful. And I just like I did up here, I went ahead in with a thirsty brush and I pulled out um, a little bit of the branches and, and then um, kind of pulled out a little bit of grass detail here. So my paper is still um, damp. It's still very cool to the touch and it's a little bit wet to the touch. Um, what I wanna do now is I wanna lay in, I'm gonna kind of glaze over top a little bit of uh, rippling water. So you can see how this blue here is kind of broken up, right? And that's the waves of the water, probably caused by these little geese here moving around through the water. They're causing ripples. So we're going to go ahead and glaze over with a dark blue. Um, I'm gonna be using either my cobalt or my Prussian blue for this. Um, and then I'm just gonna add some ripple detail through here. So now I'm going to take a little bit of the dark uh, yellow ochre here and I'm going to glaze in some waves here going right through the reflections. A light touch. You want to go right through those reflections so that they don't appear like they're other objects. They're just reflections in the water. And we can do a little bit over here. Just like that. And then we're also going to pull out so that we have some um, light areas in the waves too. So we're gonna take a uh, wet brush and we're going to go through our painting like this and then we're gonna lift out. Okay, like that. Give it a second to rehydrate and then just lift it out. Okay. Okay, so while this is still damp, I'm gonna put a little shadow underneath my um, geese. So to do that, I'm gonna use um, a little bit of my Payne's Gray mixed with a little bit of the Prussian Blue. hit mine with a hair dryer so that I could dry my painting a little bit 
And the next technique I want to demonstrate is cutting. So you're going to go back to your X-Acto knife. And what we're going to do is we just want to pull out some highlights um, within our blue wave areas. Um, just to add like a little glint on the water, okay? So we're going to take with a blade, we're going to kind of press it flat against our paper and then we're just going to kind of pull it in one direction and it's just going to pick up a little bit of the, the surface of the paper and, excuse me, it's going to leave little white um, areas. You'll see what I mean here. When I go, let's say, let's put one right here since we have a little bit of light reflecting. So you, you want to have it kind of as flat against the paper as you possibly can get it. detail there that's what you're doing when you're when you're cutting you're adding a little bit of that water detail there okay. so now that my water is done all I have left to do are the little detail here in my geese Okay, so I've removed my masking fluid so you can see that there are nice white areas left for me. When we look at our reference photo, you can see that there's little white areas on the geese and then there's some brown areas and some black areas. But the geese are pretty dark uh, because they're towards your viewer. So using my reference photo, and I'm gonna only use my uh, smaller brushes. So the biggest brush I'm using is my number 10 round. Um, and then I'm probably going to use my number six round probably the most, but in case I need it, I have my quarter inch flat and then I also have a uh, number two round as well for some really fine detail work, okay? So here we go. painted in my geese. I am all finished. There's my geese. My beautiful water detail. And that's how you do reflections in a water. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.